My name is uh, Benjamin. I'm with uh, Google, specifically Google Cloud. I'm a customer engineer for our cloud solution. And I've prepared a little talk for you about where we believe Web3 and generative AI technology can meet and what possible cool use cases can come out of it. Okay, so just gonna check the... Uh, one second, sorry. Um, before I dive into the use cases themselves, I wanted to get a bit of an idea um, from who am I actually talking to. So this whole really amazing X-Day conference, from what I've seen, it's not only about Web3, which I would define as blockchain-based technology, but also, of course, about AI, Gen AI, and lots of other cool emerging tech. But specifically between these two, who of you is here for Web3 or blockchain topics? Please raise your hand. Mainly, like the main focus. Okay, I see a few hands. And who of you, on the other hand, is maybe more here for the AI and Gen AI topics? Please also raise your hand. Okay, maybe a few people less, actually quite a few people. But in any case, I see there is, uh, let's say, a little... I guess everyone who didn't raise a hand is here for just for the food and the, the party this evening, hopefully. But... Uh, in any case, what this X Day is all about is to provide a platform for these two groups to meet, from the way I see it, and I exchange ideas. And Google is also providing a platform, the Google Cloud platform, where the intersection, intersection of these two streams and ideas and um, technologies can also meet, and hopefully cool ideas can not only be created, but also be built on top of that. So. I brought to you today five ideas what we believe can be possible, like joint connections of these two technologies. But please don't feel that this is like limited to those five ideas. And also, uh, think outside the box. Don't get too biased by me saying these five ideas is what we believe. Maybe you have an even better idea that's totally, totally possible. So first one is document search and synthesis. So what does that mean is when we look at Web3, we don't think Web3 is an industry in itself. Web3, in every industry, probably you can find a really, or multiple really cool Web3 or blockchain use cases. And having said that, also AI kind of has this um, kind of overarching ability to connect things. So we believe where they can meet could be generative AI is really good in getting insights out of a large amount of unstructured or complicated data, like documents. Think of all your documentation or documentation of tools that you use, even your, the white paper, or we heard it from Wolfgang, if you write like a pitch deck, any of these things, they can be big documents. But it might sometimes be necessary to get just a quick insight out of these documents. And with generative AI, like especially discover um, kind of tools, it can be an easy way for someone to do a quick research on getting information about your project or even um, build some kind of chatbot that allows you to ask questions to get answers from the documents that are part of your application or any blockchain application. And in a very similar fashion, as I mentioned, it can be via a search, but also via a conver conversational experience. So it could be, as you can see on the slide, these are just, again, a bit of inspiration, a few use cases, maybe most promising or most, uh, most popular, it would be the virtual digital assistant, like what you could, would consider a chatbot, that you have a way to interact either with your product or with the documentation of your product to make it whatever, if it, whatever information someone might want to access to make it easier to access that information. And if you think a bit further and if you're like small builders, small startups now, but eventually hopefully you have the ambition and the vision to grow into something big and any, your users might need support and you can also integrate generative AI in the support processes either for your own kind of employees or colleagues that provide the support or for the users directly to get answers to the questions they have about your product. So again, just to kind of close the kind of close the circle there, just because you build on the blockchain doesn't mean you have different challenges or not the same challenges that any web two application or like let's say old fashioned application would face as well. And then another idea and that's probably where the impact could be the strongest is in the space of developer efficiency. So as you, most of you, I think from my understanding, are building yourselves, are builders or hackers or coders, 
you will hopefully be quite interested to understand that with Gen AI, and it uh, doesn't have to be necessarily from Google, but we also offer these, these tools that can make it very easy or easier for you to produce products, to write code. So quite specifically, as it says on the slide, the very first point, um, it can help you to complete your code, similar to autocomplete when you start searching for something. It can um, complete one line or multiple line of, of codes. And uh, it can also generate code from natural language descriptions. I think that's what the little animation is showing on the right-hand side. So you can describe what you want the model to kind of, what code you want it to output with normal, normal like uh, descriptive language and it would produce the code. And what I should mention, that the really important part of this is, you can train this model with your own code base. So it's not like general code that you would get as a result. It would be code that fits your needs. Maybe you can like train it with your, the entire code that the application is already using or even upload additional documentation that you believe would be useful. And that's kind of the cool thing. All of these tools that we provide on Google Cloud, we give you like a base model, but you train it to really fit your needs. And uh, that's also the last part on the slide about the data privacy. So even though you train it with your own code and you use it to generate code, this will not leak into like our knowledge or someone else using it. So you still have this competitive edge and all your unique uh, kind of um, everything you build, it stays with you. I think it's really important to highlight that. And of course, in the middle, you see like you can use a chatbot type interface to use like multiple um, questions to get to design the code together with the AI. That's another possibility. And this, of course, applies to Solidity or any language that you use to write and uh, program for the blockchain as well. Now moving to something a bit more visual, obviously. Um, so we spoke now about maybe the more boring side of what Gen can do in helping you build the product, but maybe to spark your um, own creativity and your own ideas, maybe an image is, is, in a, is a better solution. Just think about instead of the Android logo, this could be an NFT that you created before, that you own, and you can now use that NFT to generate additional, like if it's an image NFT, you can create additional image, additional material, and additional content based on that NFT. It doesn't have to be a single still image. I think the next slide shows that really nice. If you want to, for example, tell a story with the NFT that is part of your collection or part of your application, we that give you the tools to not only tell one story, but really tell exactly the type of story with all the flavor that you want to see in it. Do you want it to be more like a children's story, something happy, or do you want, to be, want it to be more like maybe something more dramatic? Um, I look at maybe this middle line where the images look a bit like from a nightmare, for example. And what this slide is supposed to demonstrate is at the baseline, it's, it's still it's the same four elements. It's an animal or two animals, a human, a character, and the building, but the way you generate the content, it really can flavor the story and how you use the, the content. And to go even a step further about not just stopping there at what type of story you want to tell with a still image, we already have tools or working on tools, and I'm not sure if I can start that video with my clicker. I don't know if anyone is able to help me here with clicking on that, on that image. But you have to trust me and uh, please also check out our website or find me after the presentation. We can already generate videos based off description. So the description on the right, unfortunately I'm going to try it, I think it's not going to work with the clicker. The description on the right describes a video of this penguin doing a, like almost one minute long video interacting with objects and you probably have seen lots of really cool demos also online already about creating 3D images or even 3D worlds. And what you should hopefully take away from this is if you want to do something like this, Google Cloud can give you the tools to build it. And it's still going to be your own like, flavor in it. You can bring your own images. But we have like these large models that Daceline trained, and you can use it to generate content to your needs. And lastly, I think this is actually one of the more, I think, core use cases where blockchain technology and generative AI can meet is in watermarking and storing information about watermarking and the provenance of certain objects on, for example, a blockchain. So one of Google's kind of subsidiaries, DeepMind, recently announced that they developed a specific watermark called Thunth ID. And for the human eye, these two images look identical, the one on the left and the one in the center. They look the same, but the watermark sits within the image information. It is stored like 
on top of it. It's not part of the metadata, so that a specific model can is able to detect if this model, if this image was created by a Gen AI model, or if it was a photograph or it comes from a different source. And we can give three type of outputs. We can clearly state that a watermark was detected, even despite the image being, let's say, uh, modified with filters or uh, scaling it or cropping it, even like a tiny amount of the image would be sufficient to still be confident about it that this was a generated, like an image gener generated by AI. We can also say that we didn't detect the watermark or something in between that we believe, or the, our detection algorithm believes that the watermark has been tampered with. And this works both ways, about generating new content that gets the watermark, but also it might be really, really relevant to understand what source material was used to create that content. And think about it that already the source material could have this invisible watermark, invisible for the human eye, but visible for the machine, to really give credit to whoever put the content into the model to train it to make it good. And yeah, that could be, like, hopefully it inspires you to think about it. if you want to use generative AI to create content in your own application, maybe you want to keep track of where it is going, who's using it and for what, by putting a watermark on top, and then keeping track of that watermark and the certificate on a blockchain, for example. And lastly, as I mentioned before, we do provide the tools, but not, we don't stop there. We actually invite you to build on top of Google Cloud. And we don't want, we want to like really support you in doing this with uh, giving you 200,000, up to 200,000 of credits to use on the Google Cloud platform. We have a dedicated startup program for Web3 builders, and it doesn't stop at the credits. We also give you access to meaningful events, like this one, for example, um, or, or other ones around the world to expertise from Google experts and expertise or experts in the field to help you review your product, your architecture. And uh, also we can expose your idea, your project to VCs that if you need like more investment money, we can also help you to get in front of these folks. So check it out um, if you like, look for the Web3 startup program of Google Cloud. Or also you can find us at our booth uh, on the way to the main stage on the right hand side if you want to learn more about it or want to chat to us about it. So I invite you to swing by. We will going to be there for the rest of the day today. And with that, I'll thank you for your time and uh, hope to see you at the booth.